What are we doing in this project, do you know? We're talking about the wagon. Why are we talking about the wagon? What are we gonna do to it? We're gonna paint it purple. Maybe. What about the engine? We're gonna change it. And we're gonna make it go slow or fast? Fast. There she is! Oh, the LS3! Faster than Daddy's Mustang. That is not true. Good morning, folks. My name is Michael, and welcome to my Carb Legal LS3 Buick Roadmaster Wagon Swap Project. <laughs> So a couple years ago, I was able to do one of those amazing things in life and check an item off my bucket list, AKA buy my first V8 Mustang. But the only downside to having an amazing car like this with over 400 horsepower is that despite being actually way more practical than you would think, it's really only a car for two people. So I started wondering, is there anything out there that would be fun and cool, but I could fit more than two people in it comfortably? Maybe it's the nostalgia, maybe it's the desire to be different, maybe I'm just a cliched auto journalist that likes station wagons, but for whatever reason, here I am with my 1992 Buick Roadmaster, and it is nothing like my Boss 302 right now. And that is because it has a 5.7 liter TBI engine making 180 horsepower, but a pretty hefty 300 foot pounds of torque. Overall, in terms of quality with the car itself, it's basically a 20 footer. It looks good in photographs, it films pretty well. It sparkles in the sunlight despite having this dark kind of burgundy appearance when it's in the shadows or under clouds and so forth. Yeah, the sun has gotten to some of the plastics. All of the fake wood trim is intact. All the panels are here. There's no major dents. There's no major damage. There's no major rust. There is a little bit of surface rust on things like the rear axles and this and that. But overall, it's a it's a pretty solid car. It's a California car. I believe it was purchased new in Downey, California. Found this in the car under one of the seats. This might be the owner. Winter of 1953, 30 years. It reminded me of my grandfather who was a World War II vet. Both of my grandfathers were. And how much they instilled a love for cars to me personally growing up. So I found a poppy seed like they sell in Memorial Day. And so this is kind of an ode to you World War II era vets, to the people in our lives that make us fall in love with cars and hot rodding in general. But anyway, this thing was an absolute blast to drive around. We took it to the beach all around Southern California, super reliable, never overheated. Yes, I popped a few hoses, had to replace the AC compressor and do a few other things, but mostly I changed the oil, drove this thing around and you get all sorts of compliments and and thumbs up. We took it to the drive-in movie theater. It was perfect, except it was super, super slow, which gave me an idea. What if we did an LS swap? And even though I've never done anything like this myself, what if I did most of the work? Moving on to parts and unboxing. There are obviously many, many ways to approach an LS swap, but here's where my research led me with much of this applying to other 1991 through 96 GM B-body vehicles. This includes the Impala SS, Caprice Wagon and Sedan, Roadmaster Wagon and Sedan, Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser Wagon, and the Cadillac Fleetwood Sedan. Now, before we dive in, I wanna give a massive, massive shout out and thank you to all of our partners. Many sent parts, some offered discounts, and Chemical Guys helped out with both parts and really cool detailing products. These folks all made this project possible, and it's literally all of my dream first choice parts. So make sure to check them all out. Links to their websites in the description below. The heart of our wagon build, courtesy of Guarantee Chevrolet in Santa Ana, California, is the E-Rod LS3 Connect and Cruise system. Oh, Lord have mercy. There she is. <laughs> oh, the LS3. The included LS3 crate motor boasts 430 horsepower and 425 foot-pounds of torque. No variable valve timing, no displacement on demand, and thanks to the included catalytic converters and EVAP system components, this kit is 50 state legal for all OBD1, aka 1995 and older vehicles. The kit also includes a remanufactured 4L65E transmission, engine and transmission controllers, all the wiring and various sensors, and an air filter. Although you will have to supply your own air intake, which is why we went with Siki Manufacturing, who offered us a discount. Also, starter's not included, 
so we went ahead and snagged an OEM AC Delco unit for LS3 engines. For engine accessories, Holly graciously sent over a premium mid-mount accessory system, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Why so? Well, if you haven't heard of the Holly mid-mount system, what Holly did was turn the water pump housing into the accessory drive brackets, which ultimately pulls all of the accessories in closer to the engine block, giving you extra room. The system itself includes a replaceable water pump cartridge, a Sandin SD7 AC compressor, an LT1 style 150 amp alternator, a type two power steering pump, an SFI certified damper, a steam tube input port, so you don't have to run a line out to the radiator, idler pulley, and the perfect belt. And there's probably a few other things that I've missed in describing it here. Holly also sent over a 302-2 LS swap oil pan because the LS3 crate motors fifth gen Camaro oil pan would hang too low. And when you're doing that, don't forget to snag a new LS3 oil pan gasket. For the engine mounts and transmission cross member, we went with Muscle Rods, AKA BRP Hot Rods, who were kind enough to give us a discount. For cooling, we purchased an all aluminum three core 94 to 96 Impala SS radiator with integrated oil and transmission coolers. We got these from Radiators Express. My 92 Roadmaster is actually a tow package wagon with a mechanical fan, so we'll be converting it to dual electric fans using fans out of a 94 to 96 Impala which bolt up directly to this radiator. To run the fans, Dakota Digital was cool enough to send over a PAC 2800BT electric fan controller along with a VHX1023 universal 3.75 inch by 19 and a half inch rectangle analog instrument cluster, which has a black background and red illumination. Not only does the VHX1023 look very similar to my OEM cluster, but I was able to fit it inside the OEM cluster house housing, which should allow me to bolt it right back into place. For the fuel system, we're upgrading the fuel pump to a 255 LPH high pressure electric wall burl fuel pump that includes an installation kit. The part number is 5CA400HP. In terms of fuel lines and AN fitting, Holly also sent over a bunch of stuff from their Earl's product line, which includes vapor guard fuel lines. And I also bought a Wix fuel filter slash regulator for the C5 Corvette. To handle all the new power, Will Wood sent over a two-piston D52 brake caliper kit with pads and stainless steel brake lines. Eaton sent over a true track differential for the GM 10 bolt 8.5 inch rear end. Michelin sent over a set of Pilot Sport all season three plus performance tires. And Wheel Pros gave us a discount on a set of American Racing 18 by nine and a half VN 507 rotters, which feature a five by 127 bolt pattern, 5.25 backspacing, and a zero millimeter offset. To improve handling, Summit Racing helped us out with a discount on a bunch of Hotchkiss, Borgson, and QA1 products. For the suspension itself, we snagged QA1 upper and lower control arms, QA1 single adjustable coilovers, and upper and lower QA1 trailing arms. For the sway bars, we purchased a QA1 for the front and Hotchkiss for the rear because they make a wagon specific sway bar. For the steering, we opted for a full Hotchkiss front end rebuild kit with new tie rod sleeves, as well as a Borgson Universal 12.7 to one quick ratio steering box. And lastly, we're going to swap out the OEM steering shaft thanks to its aging rag joint and swap in a Dorman steering unit designed for the 1991 Jeep Cherokee. Inside the wagon, we snagged an OEM steering wheel from eBay. Like new seat covers for my favorite B-Body parts man, Tommy Goslin, link to his Facebook page down below. Sony sent over an XAV8100 media receiver with Apple CarPlay, as well as a Sony XS-AW8 8-inch powered subwoofer and new floor mats and carpets from Auto Custom Carpets. Lastly, and certainly not least, you guys, I am so excited about this. We're actually going to be taking the wagon down to Oceanside, California to Magnaflow HQ, where they are going to install a custom three inch exhaust with their brand new X Mod Series Universal Mufflers. If you haven't heard about these things, they've been available for a while on American muscle cars, but this is their new Universal kit which offers three different sound levels, basically going from moderately awesome to race car heaven loud. And we cannot wait to hear what the wagon sounds like and team up with these guys to build this exhaust. Basically, Magnaflow is gonna do for this project what they did for Dax Shepard when he put an LSA into his Buick Roadmaster wagon. Okay, you guys, there we have it for episode one. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not an expert in these things. I'm just a passionate car guy 
who's been given this amazing opportunity and I think it's going to be fun. I think I'm gonna learn a lot, I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna waste time, I'm gonna waste money, but I hope you all will join me for this journey because I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun and I think it's gonna be illustrative for the true kind of effort costs time uh, and, and how much effort, uh, you know, what really goes into an LS swap. We're told these things are easy, we're told they're cheap, we're told they're fast, but I don't really think that's the case after doing lots and lots of research, unless you are a mechanic, of course, and go to a junkyard and rebuild an engine yourself and all those things. But, but I think this is gonna be, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna take this whale, this slow boat of a whale, and we're gonna see what happens when we over double the horsepower. I think it's gonna be a blast. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next review, video, whatever, and we'll see you on the next episode. In part two, we're putting in the Eaton True Track Differential. We're putting on the wheels and tires. We're gonna show you why wheels and tires are not only one of the most favorite mods that you can do, but one of the best mods that you can do, even just for handling on your car without doing any suspension. So check it out soon. Good morning, everybody. I am Lana. And today we're learning about the wagon. Let's let's roll on over. So here we have the doors, and we have the wheel. You can lift this up. Isn't that cool? Here's the engine. You can open it up. That's not the engine. That's a gas cap. That's the gas cap. And here's another wheel. It says UFA. Thing is. The taillights and the road runner sign. Roadmaster. And it's the roadmaster. So thank you everybody for watching this video. I hope you subscribe and get a fun button and click the light. So bye. Upside down you go. Whoa.